We light this flame to affirm that new light is ever waiting to break through, to enlighten our ways, bringing rich possibilities in the now. We are one with the trees, one with the earth, the sky and the oceans. We are branches of God rooted deep in life. Jesus is the true vine. We are the branches. And so let us celebrate life on earth in the presence of the source of life. In the name of the Creator, the fountain of life. The name of Christ, the pulse of life. And the name of the Spirit, the breath of life. Earth is filled with God's presence. We come into the presence of the sacred today to celebrate in this sanctuary called Earth. A planet filled with divine presence, quivering in the forests, vibrating in the land, pulsating in the wilderness, shimmering in the rivers. Together, this day, let us sense the face of God in all creation. Earth is filled with God's presence. Amen.
Today's reading is from the book of Galatians, chapter 5, beginning at verse 22. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patient endurance, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against these sort of things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their ego with its passions and desires. So since we live by the Spirit, let us follow her lead. We must stop being conceited, contentious and envious. Sisters and brothers, if one of you is caught in any sin, the more spiritual among you should correct the offender in the spirit of gentleness, remembering that you may have been tempted yourselves. Bear one another's burdens and thus fulfil the law of Christ. But if you think you are important when you are not, you are deceiving yourself. Examine your own work, each of you. If you find something to boast about, at least it's something of your own and not just an empty comparison with your neighbour. Carry your own load. Jesus once said, we are known by our fruit, so what are the good fruits to which we should aspire? The Apostle Paul mentions the fruits of the Spirit, as he calls them, that Christians should work to cultivate in their hearts and minds. In the book of Galatians, Paul lists nine specific behaviours, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control that result from the work of the Holy Spirit in a Christian's life. I wish to pick out one today, kindness. Whether we are conscious of it or not, it's in our power to increase other people's joy, satisfaction and safety through simple acts of kindness. A thoughtful word, a smile or acknowledgement, giving something that's needed, listening with care, extending our patience, expressing our concern appreciatively, ordinary courtesies, refraining from criticisms or outbursts, acknowledging someone else's point of view or legitimate needs, making time for someone who is struggling, assuming the best. That power 
is worth everything. It's also the basis of our confidence in ourselves. It lets us know that regardless of what is happening outside our control, our lives are vital, sustaining and absolutely worth living. Kindness drives connection and engagement, empathy and comfort. It is thoughtfulness in action. It is self-respect and concern for others in action. Kindness lets us live life to the full. It expresses our gratitude for who we are and what we can contribute. And we can't become kinder to others without also benefiting ourselves. We can't be more genuinely self-supportive without also asking and needing less of others and benefiting them also. But kindness doesn't mean surrendering our boundaries or meeting every demand that comes our way. It doesn't mean becoming a doormat for others to walk over. It can mean being much clearer about saying no as well as yes. Nonetheless, kindness pushes us to take other people into account constantly, even while it also saves us from harming, demeaning or sacrificing ourselves. Kindness helps us physically as much as it does emotionally or spiritually. It keeps us connected. It relaxes us. It radically reduces tension and stress, according to the science. It doesn't depend upon status, education or wealth. It doesn't depend upon brilliance or age. And it certainly can't depend only on things going well for us as well. It's easy to be kind when everything is going our way. It's far more vital to be kind when life is not going our way. Kindness, as a way of life and living, depends on choices made and remade on a daily basis. Sometimes it will be self-evident and easy. Sometimes it will be an effort. Sometimes it will seem intuitive. Sometimes we will have to silence those self-righteous reasons why we should not be kind. Perhaps we learn most about kindness when we have to think about it. When we are forced by circumstances to leave our comfort zone or question our emotional habits or think hard about the effect of what we are doing or saying. It is particularly powerful when we can be kind for kindness' sake and because we are free to be kind rather than because it will make us a hero in other people's eyes or win us favours. Many people regard kindness as something sweet and yes it can sweeten life sometimes immeasurably. But in practice, and as an ideal, it is far tougher than we might conceive sweet to be. Whoever we are and however much self-awareness we have, to behave and to live with kindness challenges our egocentricity and the delusion that we are the centre of the universe with needs that should always take precedence over others. Kindness is learned moment by moment, but it will always carry most weight when we take it up as a fundamental attitude rather than as a series of individual acts, when we see it as cause and as effect.
We light this candle in remembrance and hope to call to mind Magnus and Ronald and all the saints, and all those dear to us who have gone before, especially those who have died in recent times, and as a sign of hope to future generations as yet unborn, Jesus said, I am the light of the world, whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. prayer. May we have the eyes of Christ to see beyond the media coverage that so often informs our judgment. May we have the eyes of Christ to see the people behind the stories, the lives behind the words. May we have the eyes of Christ to see beyond the violence of war, to the families torn apart, those victims of war ripped from their homes, forced to become refugees, those military personnel ripped from their families, forced to fight for freedom. May we have the eyes of Christ to, to see beyond the incomprehensible numbers of casualties, to see individuals hurting and frightened, to see beyond the abuse of power and to glimpse sad and lonely people grasping for a security that continues to slip away. May we have the eyes of Christ to see beyond terrorism the years of frustration and despair that has caused hearts to be hardened, building up uncompromising resolve. May we practice Christ's laws of love and compassion with gentleness and respect always looking for that spark of the divine that has been placed in each of God's children. And when we find it, may we help each other to seek, to nurture and honour the heart of God that beats in all of creation. Amen. If you believe and I believe that we together pray, the Holy Spirit must come down and set God's people free, and set God's people free, and set God's people free. The Holy Spirit must come down and set God's people free.
Each of us know we are loved, that each of us is one of God's children. May each of us know that we belong as God's people each and every day of the week, each month, each year and throughout our whole lifetime. May you stay safe in the way of Christ and may you be blessed by his spirit this day and always. Amen. <laughs>